white papers are one of the best ways to drive sales, build up authority, and show off your expertise as a business. But there is one problem, and that's that they're hard to write and market. But if you stick around in today's video, I'll show you how to write a white paper, format it properly, and market it to reach the broadest audience. So first of all, what is a white paper? A white paper essentially is an academic or professional report that covers a very specific industry and problem along with a solution and normally is trying to persuade the reader to a very specific angle or perspective. White papers are really common in Congress, NGOs, scientific fields, and industries like that. But nowadays, a lot of businesses actually use them as a marketing channel, they use them in content marketing, and as a way to actually build up some authorities and drive sales. Remember that white papers aren't primarily for promoting your product or service. They can be mixed in, I'll be talking about that a little bit later, but normally you're just trying to present a certain idea, persuade the reader, and just show off your expertise, which can actually help drive people through the middle and bottom of the funnel where they do convert. So there's a couple types of white papers you can produce. The first one is gonna be the standard problem solution type of white paper, where you're gonna address a certain problem in your industry and niche, and then obviously present a solution. You wanna use a lot of data, numbers, case studies, and things like that to actually back up any kind of claims and points you're making, but that's the most traditional way to approach a white paper. And this is really good as top of the funnel or middle of the funnel content, because you can generate traffic, leads, and just show off your expertise, and then people will be more likely to actually convert when they trust your business. And then the second type of white paper is a product or service focused white paper. And this is actually where you're going to essentially go under the hood of your product or service. You're going to show how it works. You're going to cover the features, the benefits, the value proposition. And you don't want to produce too many of these because it is very salesy and promotional. So maybe for every third or fourth white paper you produce, you might take this approach. And what's really good about this is that it's good for the bottom of the funnel, where once someone's researched your brand, maybe they hopped on a demo or a free trial, they can use the white paper to learn a bit more about it and then convert. Let's talk about actually formatting the white paper. So a big question is how long should the white paper be? Now, the thing is a white paper can range anywhere from five pages to dozens or even a hundred. It just depends completely on the topic and the resources that you have at your disposal. As long as you're getting the main points across, you're using a lot of data, science, and statistics to back up what you're saying, I think that there really isn't a minimum or a maximum as long as you're achieving the goal. When it comes to the actual voice and design, a white paper is normally academic and professional, so it doesn't have a casual tone of voice or look. It's very professional, it's authoritative, it's academic. So be wary of grammar mistakes, punctuation mistakes, slang. It's okay to use technical jargon as long as you explain it afterwards and as long as the audience understands what you're talking about. And what I'd recommend is using something like PictoChart or Canva to quickly make a really professional white paper. You can just go on Canva, for example, for free. You search white paper or report, you pick one of the templates and you start designing it with all the information that you have. And normally the most common file type is PDF. It's really easy to share and download. And if you gate it behind some kind of form where someone can download it, which is what I always recommend for marketing and content marketing, then they can just download it easily. They can have it on their phone, their desktop, just take it anywhere. It's also really good to include case studies inside of your white paper. So whatever you're trying to persuade the reader about, if you can use a personal case study or even one you just source that's third party, it essentially just shows whatever you're talking about actually has merit and can produce results. And since white papers are very academic in nature, of course, you want to have a lot of data, stats, graphs, charts. So for example, you can just go to Google, type in a keyword followed by stats, and you're going to find tons of roundups of data that you can use to reference inside the white paper. If you go over to images, you can actually find lots of charts and visuals you can source. But also I recommend going back to Canva and also just looking up one of the graph or chart templates and then filling out those. Moving on to actually writing the white paper, step one, of course, is idea generation. You have to come up with a good topic that interests the audience, that brings them to your business, and they actually read and end up converting after. So one of the first things I think about is the audience, which is the buyer persona. So think about who you're selling to, the questions they have, the pain points they experience, and this will help you narrow down a very specific industry and problem to talk about. Because at the end of the day, normally white papers are written to present some kind of solution for an issue. Of course, like I mentioned before, unless it's for the product kind of focused white paper. But also something amazing to do is go check out your competitors. Just go to Google, type in a competitor's website, go to their resources page, see if they have white papers, and you can get tons of inspiration that way. Especially if they have a similar audience, they've essentially already done all the research, all the writing, and now you can essentially take one of those as inspiration, but I always recommend putting your own twist on it and just using it to do something similar, but always different, just so it's better in that way. You can also use a tool like buzzsumo.com where if you type in a keyword, followed by white paper or just a high level keyword, you can see the highest performing content and most viral content in your industry, and then use that as inspiration as well. Now, once you've answered those questions, you've researched some competitors and you have some ideas about what you wanna write about, planning and organization is huge. 
when I'm writing copy for myself or clients, I always make sure to have an outline in place because when I begin writing, then I just know exactly what I'm writing about. And even though, yeah, you will change it along the way and add more things, at least when you begin writing, you just have a very clear idea of the general direction. So with the white paper, you might have all the major sections mapped out, the minor points you want to cover, where images and certain data will go. And you can just honestly start off with a blank Google Doc, write some bullet points, have some headers, and just write any ideas under each individual section. And then once you begin writing, it just greatly improves your workflow. Step three is research, because like I mentioned before, a white paper is going to be very data driven. There's going to be a lot of numbers, stats, graphs, and things like that to back up what you're talking about, especially because it's supposed to be persuasive. So if you're trying to make a claim, you do have to have data or some kind of examples to back that up. So as I mentioned before, you can go to Google, type in a keyword followed by stats or data to find a lot of roundups, but you can do the exact same thing for graphs and charts. You can do it for case studies. And what I want you to do is compile a lot of resources and references that back up what you're trying to achieve with the white paper. Make sure you document those somewhere like in a Google Doc, Google Drive, somewhere like that, just so you can reference it while you're writing. Now we can actually move on to the fun part, which is writing the white paper. And I always recommend taking it section by section. I know a white paper can seem really intimidating and daunting, but when you just take it part by part, it's a lot easier to do. So begin with the headline. The headline is the first thing people are gonna see. So it needs to draw them in, excite them, and relate to their situation, or they're not gonna actually download it and read it. So here's an example from Google, and this is a white paper they made on cloud financing. But you can see in the headline, it says a guide to financial governments in the cloud the path to predictable cloud costs. So what's nice about this is that you know it instantly what it's about, but it also provides that benefit that if you read this and you adopt cloud financing, it's gonna actually benefit the financial part of your company. Next, you wanna write the introduction. So now the intro essentially is gonna be a summary or a little bit of a foreshadow of what the white paper is all about. So one, you wanna use a bold claim. Say something that really captures attention. You might even say something that goes against the grain in your industry or something the reader wouldn't expect. I also recommend using some stats and data just to make it a little bit more interesting and data-driven right in the intro. And then they have a foreshadow of what to come. I also recommend clearly spelling out a benefit in the intro for reading the white paper. That way, when someone reads it, they have a very clear reason to actually finish it. This might be growing their business, increasing their financial situation. It depends on the exact topic, but try to make sure you communicate an actual benefit and incentive for reading it. And then you wanna flesh out each individual section of the white paper. This will depend on the individual major and minor points you wanna cover in your paper. But just keep in mind, it's academic and professional, so always keep that kind of tone of voice and personality consistent, along with your own branding, of course. And then always make it really practical. People are reading white papers normally to solve some kind of problem in their business, something like that. So if you can keep it really actionable and practical, not only does that really help them, it just makes it super memorable when they read that and when they apply it to their business, they can always think back to, hey, I learned that from the white paper. And perhaps one of the most underrated parts of copywriting anything, just like a white paper, is editing and proofreading. So you wanna make sure you're looking at things like grammar, spelling, punctuation, but also some things you don't normally think about like logical flow. Does everything you mention in the white paper make logical sense in the way it's ordered? Also make sure that everything you reference in the white paper, like stats, data, charts, and so on, is properly sourced to give good credit. And also make sure you just audit the entire thing that it aligns with the actual goal of the white paper. Are you trying to generate leads? Do you want more brand awareness and authority? Go back to the white paper and just make sure all the copy really aligns with that. And now, of course, this can be quite a bit to do. So I just recommend using something like Hemingway app or Grammarly. Just plug in all the copy. It'll fix it for you or at least give you suggestions to do so. And then you can copy and paste it back over once it's fixed into Canva or whatever tool you're using. And once you've actually published your white paper, it's now time to promote it because just like any piece of content, you don't necessarily want it just sitting around collecting dust. You want it to reach the widest possible audience. And a lot of the time when you're producing content, you want to split it 50-50. 50% producing the content, 50% promoting it. And this just helps get the greatest ROI out of that. Now, when it comes to white papers, the first thing you need to do is list it on your website. Now, I always recommend having it behind a form where people have to sign up and register to get it. This way it integrates with your email marketing funnel and then you can remarket to those prospects in the back end. And then suddenly you're not just generating traffic and having people take this thing and not use it. You actually are getting their information and then they're not slipping through your fingers because commonly what happens is when you're doing content marketing, you don't gate anything behind forms and then you're just missing out on tons of leads. Secondly, make sure to promote it on social media. As soon as it's released, promote it on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, since normally these are academic papers, LinkedIn will probably be the best because that's a network for professionals. But I also recommend taking advantage of Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. 
So these groups can have thousands to hundreds of thousands of members, and it's essentially a form of leverage. You can actually go in there, be a member of the community, be active, share content, answer questions, and then promote your white paper to that huge audience. And then of course, make sure that you're actually using email marketing to get this white paper out. So as soon as it's published, share it to your list, make sure you have a good subject line that explains the benefits of opening the email, explain in the body what exactly the white paper is all about, and then show them a link to actually go get it. If you want to learn more about white paper copywriting, go into the description and you can read my white paper copywriting guide. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.